Hello, my name is Fran Sands and this is MyBoxingCoach.com. I want to show you the cool heavy bag drill. I've got no heavy bag around me at the moment. I'm going to give you a demo. This video is in sort of three parts. This first part, uh, which is I'm going to talk you through how you construct the drill and how you can do it for yourself going forward so that you, you know, you, you, you're fully in control of what you do when it comes to the bag. Then I'll show you a a, 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 a round on the bag where I'm going to try and hit the bag uh, probably with varying degrees of success um, and I'll do a voiceover so that I can explain to you how what we're doing here translates and then we'll have a little final chat at the end thing number one to remember don't view the heavy bag in isolation get the most out of the, using the heavy bag by seeing it as part of your overall skills development or your overall training program which is why we stood on a drill pad and i want to talk you through this drill so um in boxing so this drill's got three lines going um back to front two of them off at an angle we're going to touch upon them but the, the key lines are the center one and these three lines so in boxing you have five ranges you have out of range you have edge of range which is just uh, beyond punching range so that you can just move in and then you've got long range you've got mid range and you've got close range where it's really nose to nose and head to head okay so five ranges these three lines on the floor represent three of those late ranges we've got edge of range long range and mid range okay and we are going to work through each of these ranges and we are going to develop combinations when it comes to using the heavy bag we are going to do three rounds round number one we are going to throw one punch and one punch round number two we're going to throw one punch and two punches and round number three we're going to throw one punch and three punches now the key thing is the and okay so in round one one punch and one punch so, and we are going to work at ranges on this, so we're going to mix this particular session up between long and mid-range. So, um, the and. When you hit someone with a punch, most of the time they're going to try and hit you straight back, okay? Um, they're unlikely to just crumble and keel over, and that's it. The vast majority of time they'll throw one right back. So the and is there to do some kind of defense, some kind of move, some kind of um, passage that allows any incoming shot to miss. So it could be one and duck one. So it's one. Okay. So throw the jab to the head, you duck, any shots come back over your head and then you throw a second punch. It could be, so it could be any, any body movement, foot movement, or hand block so it could be a slip inside a slip outside a duck a layback which is there could be a roll inside a roll outside it could be pushing out at an angle pushing out straight back pushing out there it could be a side step you get the point the key thing is that you do the one, the and, and then the one. So let's work through some examples. We are at the edge of range, okay? From that position, remember the line on the floor goes from the toe to the heel. You push into long range, you jab, push out to edge of range again, back in, backhand, okay? So it's, that's at some kind of speed. Skill one, push in. Skill two, jab. Skill three, push out. Skill four, back in. Skill five, backhand. Try it with the slip out. So what you've got there is, push in, jab, slip out. Any shot goes past there. Long range, right hook, push out. So you got is one, one, 
mess that one up. One. So you slow it right down, slow it down to what you need it to be. And these are all long range. We're moving from the edge of range to long range. So edge of range, push in, slip in, long range left hook, push out. And you can get to the point where you combine the push in with the jab. So it's Yeah? One and one at long range. Then it's try one and two. You get the idea here. Push in jab, lay back, one, two, push out. Push in jab, slip, long range, right hook, long range, left hook, out. So some kind of speed you're going. In jab. Lay back, one, two. In, jab, one, two. One and two. And then, of course, you got the three. Same principle. Edge of range. Push in. Backhand. Slip in. One, two, three. Push out. So it's in, backhand, slip in, one, two, three. You get it? Let's look at mid-range. And what we'll do here, we'll stay at mid-range. Uh, stay at mid-range. So yeah, this is... So you land in these type of shots. Same principle applies. Keep the feet there. We could even use these angled side steps now. So you could go one, two, one and two. That one, one and two. There's two uppercuts, uppercut one, push to the side, uppercut two. Um, hook, roll, Hook, hook. One and two. One and two. Um, one and one, two, three. All staying at mid range. Watch my foot working along this front line. One and one, two, three. One, and one, two, three. You can sit down, you can work these, you could say to yourself, pen and pencil, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna create five combinations at long range, five at mid range. And then of course you've got the transition. One, two, three. So what we've done there is move from the edge of range to long range to mid range. All with this concept of one and one and two, one and three. And once you get beyond that, then you can do one and three and one. So you can build up combinations, all of this done on the heavy bag. But what's key is that you do something like this and the heavy bag forms part of the overall training program. I'm gonna stop there and talk you through a round of heavy bag, and then we'll have a quick catch up at the end. Okay, onto the heavy bag round. Um, so don't expect a superstar performance here. Uh, I had oxygen on standby. You can see there we started with just the jab, the lay back and the jab, so that's the one and the one. Jab, slip out, backhand. Again, that slip out is the hand, and there's a double backhand, but with a lay back in between. All things that we work through during the drill. Jab, long range, left hook, but with a slip. So you're holding the range. That time and uppercut. You can vary things. That's the good thing about this approach to doing the bag. You don't have to start off like a, you know, a lunatic throwing loads of punches. 
you can ease yourself into the round. Okay, so now we're onto the one and two. So the layback is used quite a bit. Again, same again. But that layback is just such a, a common move because it's so effective, it works really well, especially when you're at long range. Same again, but just bringing that long lead hand hook in up the middle. Now we're getting into something a little bit different with our side steps. One, two, pushing off the center line and another side step. And there's a little pivot. We didn't do any pivots during the drills, but there's nothing stopping you doing that. A pivot with the lead hand hook can be really effective. All of this then being executed at edge of range and long range. Now we're into the one and the three. One, one, two, three. Double lead hand hook. So there you go, it's just that simple movement, timing it so that you're doing the one and the three. So let's move now into close range or mid range. Um, staying nice up fairly close to the bag, you have to get a little bit more inventive here. So what we're doing then is a lead hand hook, it's still one and one. But again, uh, use little feet movements and lots of body movements as well. So you're using slips here, so that way, that way you can generate more power with the hooks, the second hook. A little push out to range there, both with a double hand, a double backhand hook. And again, you see there with that switch of feet. Um, one thing I'll say, see the way I'm keeping my head still on the bag there? Don't do that. Um, that's me thinking. <laughs> so uh, you, if you're sparring or in contact, you need to keep that head moving side to side um, when you're at close range. Otherwise, you're a sucker for uppercuts. So we're into the one and two now. But again, you'll see those that foot shift. That's where we're doing the angled side step. Just giving ourselves room, leverage off the hook, and then moving round the bag to deliver more shots there. Okay, still onto the one and two. Again, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking you've got to be moving the head side to side. Um, so make sure you do that, just drifting the head side to side up into the bag. Double lead hand hook off the switch to the side. And then you want to be switching body to head and flank to centre line. So you need to be, when you when you whack someone around the side, you'll often get an open and come up the middle. So make use of that. We're on to one and three now. So you're really starting to bunch them shots up. And here's where you start putting more effort in. Once you start delivering these short three punch combinations, you, you can really pick up the pace then. You get into the flow. And even left four go there, getting carried away with myself. Um, but your brain, you're thinking all of the time here. And if you've drilled during your drills, if you've got those four or five combinations set, then you don't have to think so much. Your brain will instill those patterns. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's a couple of minutes on the back. So there you go. This is about um, keeping your brain working. Look, your brain wants you to learn boxing. When you set yourself to learn boxing your brain really really wants you to to do it well it wants to keep you safe your brain is quite a lazy thing it wants patterns it doesn't want to think through every single time when you're in a situation where you're actually boxing be it on the heavy bag or anywhere else it wants to just implement patterns because it's easier um, and you can you can develop those patterns using the drill on the floor sitting down coming up with the set of drills that the set of punch sequences that you're going to use the one and one one and two and one and three drilling them over and over again and then trying to implement that on the bag it's about instilling discipline and of course it helps um, visualization you know if you can visualize an opponent and you can develop those drills around that visualization that is really powerful when it comes to your learning and look, there are lots of different ways to use the heavy bag. This is just one of them. I just hope it's, uh, it's been of use. One more thing I'm often asked. I was sent a while ago um, a pair of gloves by a company called RDX. This is the glove. It's a, um, a Cortex E-Series. This is a 12-ounce glove. If you're going to buy gloves and you're wanting to use 
to do sparring, never buy a 12 ounce. I would never allow 12 ounces to be used in a spar. So these come in 16 ounce as well. Um, and they sent me them just to uh, to try them out and asked whether I would would post my thoughts on them. Now I've done about 40 rounds in these in these gloves. The leather. Never buy gloves that aren't leather. Always get leather gloves. <clears throat> they last longer, more hard wearing, <clears throat> and most importantly, they don't end up smelling like something's crawled into them and died. Um, these, you know, they're a composite. I'm not going to go through all of the detail. I'll, I'll put links below if, if you want to go and have a look at this glove. These are not cheap. These are at the expensive end of the market. So these gloves are £120 in the UK, $180 in the US. They are very good. You Honestly, you, you're getting what you pay for. Like everything else in life, when it comes to boxing gloves, you do get what you pay for. Um, I've been very impressed with these gloves. So these are the RDX Cortex series, Cortex T series. <clears throat> um, but they are really good gloves, so I just wanted to let you know, they're the gloves I'm using currently. By the way, I get nothing for this. They sent me the gloves, so that's it. I don't, you know, I've got nothing to gain by whether you go and buy or whether you don't. Sometimes I just like to be able to make a recommendation. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Uh, subscribe, sign up to my book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit, and click the link and, and go and drop your email. Lots of information in there about how to use the heavy bag. Um, shadow boxing, 10 top skills, how to get the right mindset, the perfect training regime, how to deal with um, um, the psychology of the sport. So sign up and, and, and get a copy of that. Well worth it. My name's Franz Sands and this is mybox.coach.com. Thank you.